tonight on Evening. See what's brewing in Seattle's Georgetown. Do whatever is necessary to make the best beer. From its steamy past. Really unique pieces of history right here. To its sweet, sweet future. Mm. See, I told you this was the place. Come along as we celebrate one of the Northwest's quirkiest places. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hey, I'm Jim Dever with a special show all about Seattle's oldest neighborhood, Georgetown. It's also home to Seattle's oldest saloon, Jules Mays, the one-of-a-kind trailer park mall, and Deep Sea Sugar and Salt, a bakery so popular, special orders have to be made months in advance. Georgetown might also be Seattle's most interesting neighborhood. At least that's what the guy who owns the town's largest winery thinks. His name tops the West Coast's largest urban winery, an old Dr. Pepper plant at the edge of Boeing Field. I make wine for everybody, and everybody here is welcome. And I'm not welcome in many places, so I But you're welcome it. here. Charles Smith is the rock and roll vintner of Seattle's Georgetown neighborhood. After you. Thank you. World's largest store. <laughs> Perhaps. As a former indie band manager, Charles has an ear for adventure. We should go in here and get some new records. New old records. That looks cool, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Eugenio Finardi. Yeah. He trusts the Georgetown Records staff to pick out the best music he's never heard. Don't even ask me, I want a surprise. It's, okay. it, it's kind of like Christmas, but I'm Santa Claus. Isn't he Santa, because he's the one picking out there the records? Go. Yes, he's Santa. Yeah. And you're the elf. There you go. Right next door, without opening a door, is the famed Fantagraphics bookstore. I'm in Georgetown Records, now I'm in Fantagraphics. Yeah, it's kind of like the Cal Neva Lodge in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. I'm in California, I'm in Nevada. Just down the street, Fran's Chocolates in the old brewery building. You have 80 pounds of records, so I'll get the door for you. Thank you. Super. Ooh. See, I told you this was the place. Do you eat it all in one bite? Why not? Like oysters, but better. Mm. I'm gonna get something for you to take home. Oh, Charles. I shouldn't Does have. Does this mean we're going steady? <laughs> Just across the street, we pop into one of Charles's favorite hangouts, Star Brass Works Lounge. Oh, that's good. On any given Sunday, this place is gripped in football fever. Yeah, there's a couple guys with big, huge number 12 flags and Seahawks flags, and when they score, they run back and forth across oh, the bar. Oh, that's great. Our last stop is Slim's Last Chance. The woman back there said green chili verde. It's a hipster haven, cool as ice, with chili hot as fire. Strong. A tasty way to wrap up our tour of one of Seattle's spiciest neighborhoods. Charles, thank you. I've enjoyed this day immensely. It's been great. Here's to you. And here's to Georgetown. And here's to Georgetown. Thanks for the wine, Charles. You know, Georgetown is also synonymous with beer, and it has been for more than 100 years, back when Rainier first started brewing here. And there's a brewery that shares the neighborhood's name that's taking that tradition into the future. It doesn't get any clearer than this. Georgetown Brewing likes beer. Georgetown started making beer in 2002 at the old Rainier Brewery site. Owner Manny Chow made Manny's Pale Ale, and it quickly became the Northwest's go-to brew. The brewery grew fast and relocated to this space in 2008. There's not a pint glass in sight here, but fans flock to Georgetown Brewery anyway, because these guys are so cool, they give their beer away. Currently we are doing free samples. We've been doing free samples since we opened. Bodhisattva, an IPA, and Lucille, another IPA, are their current best sellers. But we counted 11 beers on offer. That's a lot of craft brew creativity. 
We've always got new beers here at the brewery that don't necessarily go out to bars and restaurants. They also do good with their beer. Georgetown was even tapped, uh, see what I did there, to make a beer for Pearl Jam. We did the Home Shows Pale Ale for the Pearl Jam's Home Shows at the Safeco Field. So that was a really fun project. We're happy to be a part of it. 100% of the proceeds that we made from that beer went to their Vitalogy Foundation. So we were really psyched to be a part of that. Georgetown has won plenty of beer making awards. It's a family here. We all show up with the intent of making good quality product and we like that the customers appreciate that. And they're adding a fresh take to a Northwest brewing tradition that began in this neighborhood more than a century ago. Lots of great little neighborhood breweries here in Georgetown, but now let's go back to wine because after all, Kim insists as she takes us to a tasting room where you can raise a glass for good. We've got a couple little sayings. It's raise a glass for good or drink charitably, right? I mean, what's not to love about that? <laughs> Philanthropy is baked into the business plan at Tint Cellars. The family-owned winery donates a portion of every sale to nonprofits and an additional $150 a year for each charter wine club member to charities of their choosing. We're about creating opportunities to support one another. They also want to stay true to the Georgetown neighborhood, so they spent two years renovating this historic building. We had in mind to have this wonderful outdoor open patio, to have a bay door to allow the guests to move throughout our space. Wine club members get four allocations of four wines per year and a free tasting session every month. So you can drink good wine and do good deeds in the heart of historic Georgetown. Thanks, Kim. Tint Cellars Georgetown is open Wednesday through Sunday. You know, there are a lot of thriving small businesses in this neighborhood, and Jose found one that's built to last. You're at Hard Mill down in Georgetown. We make canvas and leather products. I'm Ryan, and this is my brother, Michael. We are the owners of Hard Mill. A lot of people that come in and buy our stuff are just people that are passionate about cooking at home, using high quality stuff. These are kind of a lighter weight apron option. We have two different fabrics. So this is our, um, our wax canvas option and wax denim. And then we do a, a non-wax canvas uh, that's machine washable. These are all vintage restored pieces that are from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. And over here we have our cast iron pan handle covers. These are our knife bags. We have a 10 knife roll version and we also make a smaller uh, four knife roll version here. Yeah, something a lot of people come in here to shop for are belts. And so we make uh, yeah black and brown leather belts. Yeah, this is our market tote bag right here. Hats as well. So the cool thing is in the front, of course you have the store, but in the back is where the full production happens. You know, a lot of our stuff isn't really like automated machines. It uh, still requires a lot of manual input. So when our leather comes in. That's a lot of leather. It's a lot of leather. <laughs> It'll either go through our strap cutting machines or it'll go on the clicker press to click out leather, kind of like a cookie cutter. This is our production area. We store most of our fabric here and we'll actually roll out canvas on this table and it'll be cut into products. Chuck is taking these totes, sewing up the top edges, and then after that's done, uh, it'll go past this area over to our leather area in the back where we'll rivet the leather onto the items. So Jose, we're gonna have you rivet this apron, but we're gonna ship this to a customer, so we can't have you mess it up. Just punch it hard and then it should be something good. <laughs> but also, also the finesse. Yeah, there's, there's a finesse. Oh, there's a technique to it. I'm gonna go ahead with the big guy. Don't hit your hand. All right, don't hit my hand. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, We'll let Tyler uh, stick to this job. No, I'm just kidding. You're oh! you're <laughs> it's something just very rewarding about creating a physical product with your hands. It's cool to be connected with an old craft like that. Nice to be able to offer something authentic. An old technique that really hasn't been outmatched necessarily. I think we work really well together. I don't really get sick of Michael. You know, we just work. We don't, we get work great together. I, I get to hang out with him almost every day, and I, I don't. I think that's a blast. I think he gets a little sick of me sometimes, though. So. <laughs> Thanks, Jose. Hard Mills store here in Georgetown is open every day but Sunday, and you can also order their products online. Later in the show, how to get married on a budget in a shipping container. And up next, Georgetown's famous Wall of Dogs. 
Welcome back to a special edition of Evening all about Seattle's Georgetown neighborhood. If you're looking for fresh flowers, we have a very colorful place for you in this neighborhood. But the story actually starts up north. Here's Kim. In the Skagit Valley between the old barn and the little white church, Vivian Larson is gathering her livelihood one stem at a time. Morning comes early, at least two hours before the garbage man wakes you, when you can actually drive down First Avenue. The first staff member gets here at 4 a.m. Uh, we start pulling product out of the coolers that we've stored overnight. We load it up all on carts, we display it, and then growers start arriving. The Seattle Wholesale Growers Market started seven years ago and has been growing ever since. That's a lot of early mornings. Well, I'm not a morning person. <laughs> Coffee is my friend. <laughs> Doors open precisely at six. If I've been named the unofficial official mayor, I have no real power except I get to ring the bell. <laughs> we like to have fun here. The fun began when a small group of farmers decided to form a co-op to pool their resources and sell fresh flowers where skyscrapers grow. Our clients are mostly florists. And then we have other business owners that use um, flowers for their business. So we've got like photographers that come in here, interior designers, um, restaurants, things like that. Local flowers are fresher. A lot of what is on the floor today that I'm selling to customers was cut yesterday. Yesterday when the sun was setting, somewhere between the old red barn and the little white church. They are so proud of their product. It's, it's exciting to talk about it and then take that excitement back to um, my business and talk to my customers about it. I love color. Thanks, Kim. Although that is a wholesale market, they're open to the general public from 10 to 1, Monday through Friday. Now, there's another business here in Georgetown that likes to take pictures of its customers and post them on the wall. There's no privacy violation, though, unless your name is Goob Bob, Barney Boy, or Fliffle. Just another day at the office for Lori Anderson. I'm just gonna get her while she's laying down. Wrangler. Can you sit? You're not going to, are you? Photographer. Good girl. Good girl. And shopkeeper at a dog's dream pet supply in Georgetown. <laughs> if these walls could talk. It's about personality. Well, maybe they do. The pictures aren't about quality, they're about personality. Look, 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 look. Every pet visitor is welcome to have their celebrity portrait taken and placed on the wall. And this is the fun part. How many in all? I don't know, a lot. We counted more than a thousand. <laughs> 12 years worth. <laughs> From Amos to Zoe, Pumpkin and Pepper and Sergeant Pepper, everyone gets one shot. That's it. We've got some where dogs are barely in frame. We've got tops of heads. We've got side shots. Lori's own little guy was the first. Your tiger's the one that started off. He's my logo. Um, first, first dog I had as an adult. God, I didn't realize him so. And he was a grumpy old man. I always said he was the Walter Matthau of dogs. He was loyal to the end. Who would have guessed that the walls of a pet shop could serve as such a touching memorial? A bunch of people do come back and have quiet moments in here while they find their dog. But this collection of moments captured in time are a living, growing thing. <laughs> Every dog has an opportunity. A room full of love. Oh, but you got your ears up. I'm going to get you anyways. A tribute. Good girl. To our favorite furry friends. Thank you. A Dog's Dream is open seven days a week. Okay, now on to another Georgetown location that is both historic and electrifying. In this building, steel and steam tell the century-old story of a city on the rise. All of this equipment in here, it's all original. You know, it's in great condition. Completed in 1907, the Georgetown steam plant generated electricity for Seattle's streetcars. Really unique pieces of history right here. Huge boilers fueled by oil and sometimes coal created high pressure steam. And then that steam came into this room where we're in now, which is the engine room, spin those turbines and generate electric current and then send that out to the electrical system. 
last used in the early 50s, this historic site is a virtually untouched time capsule. When you come in here, it looks like it would have to someone who was in here in 1907. The only full-timers on site these days are the occasional spirits. I can't reveal where the ghosts are, okay? We have a deal. I won't reveal their location as long as you know, they won't do anything too bad to me. Now leased to a local nonprofit for restoration and continued public use, it's a haven for visiting artists, photographers, and history buffs. It's a great community resource. A cathedral dedicated to the can-do spirit of Seattle's first century. I mean, this is real living history here. You can see the historic Georgetown steam plant for yourself every second Saturday of the month. That also happens to be the date of Georgetown's monthly art walk, Art Attack. Still to come, meet Georgetown's king of weddings. And up next, the studio where artists under the age of 50 need not apply. And we're back with a special edition of Evening all about Seattle's Georgetown neighborhood. You know, people often tell me, Jim, you're not getting older, you're getting better, like a fine wine. And there's a space here in Georgetown that's helping artists do that too. Life may not start at 50, but it sure doesn't have to end there either. Well, I'm gonna make old cool. That's the message of Fogue Studios. Art-minded people, other artists. A 6,000 square foot creative space for artists who've successfully crossed the half century mark. It just gives me a place to focus. I work with skulls, which some people find creepy, which is fine. Patty Curtis is the founder. You know, I lost my job at 53. Um, as a lot of people in my company, we all got let go um, because we aged out. So she set out to phase out the age out. I wanted to do something for people over 50 to make them feel relevant and cool. Fogue is a collective of 50 artists, musicians, and writers. Going through the same thing together. All over the age of 50. We all take care of each other, we all nurture each other, and we all build each other up. A supportive place where I can not worry about anything else and just express myself. Fogue is proof that you can't put an age limit on creativity. Just keep making things. And feel important. Fogue Studios is open afternoon, Thursday through Sunday. Up next, Georgetown's quicky, quirky wedding service. Welcome back to our show all about Seattle's Georgetown neighborhood, a very special place for people in love who want to make a lifetime commitment, especially if they're in a big hurry. Welcome to Georgetown, Seattle, where love is in the air. And so is plenty of actual air traffic. Playing it by ear, <laughs> literally. It's all just part of the charm of America's only shipping container wedding chapel. Something a little quirky, a little different. This trailer park kind of just fits the vibe of who I am and away we went with that. Shotgun Ceremonies offers wedded bliss on a budget. Something unique and special and memorable that they can do and it's gonna cost them, you know, $350. And pets, say hello to Bosun, are always welcome. Any pets are, are allowed, and I've had cats here, and they, they usually don't have the best of time, but there's definitely been cats. Yes, pets are always welcome, um, absolutely, and this is a great space for them. All weddings are offered with an Elvis option. There's definitely people that want Elvis at a Vegas-style quickie wedding, so we got him. Knock out three songs, and most of the time they really enjoy it. You may have heard this King Crooner on the radio. Through downtown to that scene. Not singing, but talking you through the commute. 374th Street, it crashed there. It's traffic reporter Shane Cobain. I really enjoy doing it, and the best thing I think is when you can put a smile on somebody's face. <laughs> and he's also related to Kurt Cobain. He's a very interesting guy, and he makes the weddings really fun. Yeah. This efficient officiant has married thousands of couples, but she's never lost her love for love. 
I don't know how I could quit doing this. <laughs> it's, it's great. <laughs> so if you just can't wait to get hitched, you'll find a shipping container ready to deliver the perfect wedding. So it's official. Yes. We did it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Congratulations to the bride and groom. Here's to hoping your marriage lasts longer than your ceremony. Well, I'm getting the boot, so two of them actually. So goodbye from Georgetown. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.